be your name, O God. We worship your majesty. Blessed be your name. King of glory, we adore you. King of glory, we exalt you. Hallowed be your name. We bless you. We praise you. We adore you. Hallelujah. Calvary greetings to you all in the matchless name of our Lord Jesus Christ, Savior and King. Today we are having prayer breakfast from the network of churches. And this uh, morning, our theme is called to the cross, called to the cross. We shall be praying on behalf of the body of Christ. We shall be uh, praying on behalf of uh, believers across the world, uh, those who uh, are serving in uh, missionary capacities, uh, leaders of the local churches, and um, in all uh, communities where believers are, our families, and as individuals. We'll start off with Mark chapter 8, verse 31 to 35. Mark chapter 8, verse 31 to 35, called to the cross. Hallelujah. I'm Pastor Ken Wally, and on behalf of the uh, leaders of the network of churches, we, uh, uh, we thank you all for coming on this broadcast this morning. Mark chapter 8, verse 31 to 35. And he began to teach them that the son of man must suffer many things by the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and after many days, after three days, rise again. He spoke this word openly. Then Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. But when he had turned around and looked at his disciples, he rebuked Peter saying, Get behind me, Satan, for you are not mindful of the things of God, but the things of man. When he had called the people to himself with his disciples also, he said to them, whoever desires to come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever desires to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake and the Gospels will save it. Hallelujah. Praise be to God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. The cross is a divinely appointed intersection where we encounter Satan by the empowerment of Jesus Christ. The cross is a divinely appointed intersection where we encounter Satan by the empowerment of Jesus Christ. Now, if you notice about the life of our Lord Jesus Christ and his death on the cross, we will notice that all of his life was a prophetic fulfillment, a prophetic fulfillment. In Isaiah chapter 53, his calling is laid out very clearly. Isaiah chapter 53 and several other scriptures, we see that the entirety of his life and ministry if you read the synoptic gospels for many occurrences, the scripture will say, as was quoted by the psalmist or as was quoted by the prophet uh, Isaiah, all right? So all through the life of Jesus, it is a manifestation of what has been prophetically laid out about him. And so he came in the fullness of time and he fulfilled God's mission for his life. Now, when Jesus came, the scripture describes his, his, his life. Uh, in Isaiah 53, 
I want to read from verse one, uh, verse two and three. For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant and as a root out of dry ground. He has no form nor comeliness. And when we see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. He is despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised and we did not esteem him. Now, the scripture says that he was ugly. He was ugly. He was as a root out of dry ground. He has no form, no comeliness, and there is no beauty that we should desire him. Now, Jesus Christ is described prophetically as ugly, so much not the Hollywood description of Jesus Christ. When we watch um, stories and movies of the account of Jesus Christ, he's always that handsome looking figure most of the time. But that is far from what the scripture uh, says about him in Isaiah 53, verse two and three. In fact, he's not just physically ugly, he is saddled with all kinds of emotional conditions. He is despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised and we did not esteem him. So he, his life was marred with all kinds of ugly ugly circumstances that reflect the ancestral condition of mankind, all right? So the entirety of the, the ancestral uh, uh, challenges that humanity faces was manifested in his external visual, the ugliness, of his outside and the emotional challenges of his soul. So that struggle, that challenge, and that ugliness was a reflection of all the ancestral challenges from Adam all the way through Abraham and then through the tribe of Judah, and then uh, um, uh, manifested in Jesus Christ. So his life was ugly, was full of uh, uh, a lot of emotional challenges. He was rejected, a man of sorrows, acquainted with grief. So uh, uh, first of all, the 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 manifestation of his, of the ancestral challenges of man manifested in the life of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And um, in Mark chapter, Mark chapter 8, verse 31 to 35 that we just read, he told at some point, he tells the disciples openly that he would be uh, he will go to the cross, he will be crucified at the cross, and um, he will resurrect on the third day. And the scripture says that Peter takes him aside and rebukes him and says, This is not going to happen, not under my watch. Now, Jesus Christ mentions that he was going to be challenged, rejected by the elders and chief priests and killed. And Peter did not want to hear that. And so he rebuked Jesus. But the scripture says Jesus took Peter aside and Jesus rebuked him and said to him, get behind me, Satan, for you are not mindful of the things of God, but the things of man. 
So Jesus also rebuked Peter because he uh, uh, um, and described and the spirit behind the 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 resistance of Peter. He says, "Get thee behind me, Satan." For you are not mindful of the things of God, but the things of man. Hallelujah. And then the scripture says in verse 34, when he had called the people to himself with his disciples also, he said to them, whoever desires to come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. So Jesus is articulating to his uh, followers that he will have to go to the cross. The cross is two wooden bars that come together, all right? Two wooden bars that come together, and there is an intercession. And the gospel is referred to as the message of the cross, the message of the cross. That's the message of the gospel, hallelujah, because it was at the cross that Jesus encountered Satan and the kingdom of darkness and ultimately defeated Satan and the kingdom of darkness. Now, the question is, why did Jesus have to go to the cross? He had to go to the cross because all the way from Adam till when he came, man had become the victim of a lot of injustices, a lot of injustices that started with man's sin. Satan lured Adam in the Garden of Eden, Adam and Eve, and they fell short of the glory of God. They were cast out. Now, the cycle of offenses, sin, transgression, trespasses never stopped from Adam right from the sons of Adam and Eve, Cain and Abel, we see Cain murder um, Abel. It continues uh, through uh, uh, Noah, his sons, Shem, Ham, Japheth. We see a lot of um, uh, uh, injustices being perpetuated, a lot of wrongdoing, a lot of sin that is uh, perpetuated within human beings all the way till Jesus comes. Now, there is an important principle in life, which is the principle of equalization. The principle of equalization. And that principle means two things. First of all, that all truth is parallel. All truth is parallel. Uh, uh, the, the great uh, general of God, uh, uh, Maurice Cerullo, writes about that in his blog, about God telling him that all truth is parallel. And um, he explains that he didn't understand it. So he asked God and God told him that we live in both the natural and the supernatural. Now that's not a strange truth to some of you listening to me, that we live in the natural and the supernatural at the same time. And anything that manifests in the natural first manifests in the supernatural. So that's the, the principle of uh, uh, that says that all truth is parallel. That means whatever is happening in the natural is also happening in the supernatural. For instance, at this particular point in time, we see how the, the death of the incident of the death of George Floyd has triggered a, a, a protest around the entire world where people are calling for justice. Every race, every color, every people are just tired and are calling for justice. And protests are all across the world in uh, not just the 50 states of the United States. Protests are in London, uh, England. Protests are in Germany. Protests are taking place in France. 
protests are taking place uh, in, 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 in Africa, in Ethiopia, in, 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 in Australia, all over the world, uh, because it is time to deal with the issue of injustice. And some of you who are familiar with me, and last year were at Atonement 2019, where I told you to write three things that were going to happen uh, uh, based on Psalm 110. I said there was going to be uh, justice, there was going to be revival, and there was also going to be increase for God's people. Now, how did I know that? It's because the Lord revealed that that's his agenda. So in the supernatural realm, that is God's agenda. And so in the natural realm, we see a manifestation, a manifestation uh, um, where the world in the natural realm is calling for justice. It's calling for justice. And you will notice that some major corporations are trying to resolve the issue of injustice against minorities. Um, uh, for instance, SoftBank has dedicated $100 million to, to startups by minorities. Uh, um, Apple has its own initiative. Microsoft has also uh, 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 set up an initiative. There, there are all kinds of, of donations. Uh, Netflix, the owners of Netflix uh, uh, have also donated money to minority schools uh, for education. And, and, and so much resources are moving, are moving uh, towards minority because there is a call for justice in the natural realm. There is a shift. But like I said, last year, uh, God told me that this was going to happen this year. And so um, um, it tells us that with what is taking place in the natural, the same thing is happening in the supernatural realm, in the spiritual realm. So that tells us that as believers, we must be praying for the justice of God to manifest, for the justice of God to manifest. And there are prophetic um, 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 revelations to this to this. Um, 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 to this point, um, um, if you are from, if you've watched uh, television recently, um, uh, there's been an advertisement. In fact, it's also been circulated in social media that David Wilkerson, David Wilkerson, was the founder of um, uh, one of the major churches in New York, uh, um, and he prophesied. He prophesied that there was going to be a great a, a serious pandemic that was going to hit uh, New York. And um, after the pandemic, uh, there will be much prayer and um, uh, the prayer will result in a revival, in a great revival uh, that will be one of the greatest moves of God on the face of the earth. So now we see that new the, with the coronavirus pandemic, New York was the epicenter of, in the entirety of the United States, hard hit. And, and, and so um, um, with these occurrences, the call for justice and um, the fact that it's, it's been revealed that that's one of the things that's gonna take place this year, it is time for believers to pray, to call for justice. And believe me, believe people are praying. Um, the record from, from book sellers indicates that there has been a great demand for Bibles since the coronavirus pandemic began. A great surge in the demand for Bibles. People are looking for answers. That means there is a spiritual test. There is a natural spiritual hunger. All right. And the scripture says, uh, uh, blessed are they that hunger and test for righteousness, for they shall be filled. So, first of all, what I'm trying to establish is the fact that we 
we are at an important time, very critical time. And Jesus Christ, when he had to go to the cross, it was to deal with all the injustices that mankind was facing, to deal for once with all the injustices. That's why he came and offered himself. And that's why he revealed to the disciples that he will be crucified. And Peter was against it. And uh, Jesus addressed him as Satan. Because the last thing Satan wants is, is to, to encounter us at that cross. And to encounter Jesus, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. The scripture tells us in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, if the princes of this world had known that by crucifying Jesus, they were going to, to get him to become king of kings and lord of lords. They wouldn't have done it. That it was a tragic mistake. The cross was a tragic mistake because that was a point where Satan and Jesus Christ came into collision, a collision point. Hallelujah. And we know what happened. Jesus defeated Satan at the cross because he offered himself as a sacrifice. He defeated Satan, principalities. He went to, the, to, to, to Hades and took the keys of death uh, 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 and hell. He, he defeated principalities, powers, authorities. He defeated the entirety of the kingdom of darkness. Hallelujah. He defeated them. And that was a fulfillment of Psalm 110 in Jesus, where the scripture says, the Lord said to my Lord, sit thou at my right hand until I make your enemies your footstool. Hallelujah. Until I make your enemies your footstool. So Jesus defeated Satan at the cross. And he went ahead and told the disciples, if anyone will come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross and follow me. So first of all, Jesus was called to the cross to defeat Satan and the kingdom of darkness on our behalf. He became the lamb that takes away the sins of this world. So he dealt a major blow. He dealt the, the ultimate blow to the kingdom of darkness. And now he calls us, he calls us to our cross. He calls me and you to our cross to that great intercession. Now, what is that great intercession? The children of Israel were not released from, from the bondage of Egypt, except the Passover lamb was slain. And with the blood, they marked their doorposts. Hallelujah. They marked their doorposts and the angel of destruction did not touch them. Hallelujah. The angel of destruction did not touch them because of the Passover lamb. And God told them, make sure you celebrate the Passover every year because it will be a commemoration. It will be a time when I will reenact and I will reinforce the victory of your deliverance from bondage from the kingdom of darkness. And so Israel continued to celebrate the Passover. And Jesus came at Passover. And at Passover, that was when he defeated Satan and the kingdom of darkness at the cross. And all the feasts, all the feasts of Israel, all the feasts that God uh, gave us in Leviticus chapter 23, um, the, the, the Sabbath, the Passover, the, the uh, first fruits, uh, which is resurrection, Pentecost, uh, trumpets, 
atonement and tabernacles. The monthly feast specifically are feasts where we have an intercession. We come to meet the, the kingdom of darkness at an intersection. Now, in Job chapter 1, uh, verse 6, the Bible says that there was a day when the sons of God appeared before God and Satan showed up. Satan showed up. Every time that God will encounter his people, Satan also shows up. And the reason Satan shows up is because he's a prosecutor. He comes with a tall list of accusations and he, he waves it at God and says that, God, you cannot bless your people because of this, because of that, because of their sins, because of their iniquities, because of their transgressions. And that is why God instituted those feasts, because at the feast, we have a divine encounter with God and the Lord Jesus Christ, our advocate. And um, we cannot miss the, the, the feast because it's an appointment. It's the moed. And God comes to encounter us, but Satan also shows up with a tall list of accusations. And uh, that point, every feast is the point where we, we encounter Satan because it is divine design. God is coming down to encounter us, to bless us. And Satan shows up with a tall list of accusations to say that, uh, to, to argue for why we should not be blessed, why we should not receive justice. And so it is important for us to understand that intercession. Now, um, at Pentecost, the eve of Pentecost, I had a divine encounter. And in that encounter, I saw that we were coming to an intersection. That's the eve of Pentecost. We were at an intersection. And um, I saw Satan and the kingdom of darkness coming to, to pass our path. In my vision, I saw the kingdom of darkness coming to cross our path. And, uh, and uh, when I saw that vision, immediately the revelation of the cross came to me. And that, and the Lord showed me that we had to encounter, we had to, we, when we come to the cross, to that intersection, we have to come against the kingdom of darkness. Come against the kingdom of darkness at the cross. And so I called for a 12 hour prayer on that day that was um, uh, the last day of May, I believe um, um, uh, 30, 31st May, I called for 12 hours of prayer. And uh, a lot of you responded from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. because I wanted us to be up to, up to that cross. And um, out of that prayer, the Lord has led me to... Uh, set up a prayer tower, a prayer tower where we shall be praying from 12 midnight to 4 a.m. 12 midnight to 4 a.m. And um, we've started it. Uh, and um, uh, the Lord told me to open it up to the body of Christ. And that's what I am doing this morning to, 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 to launch the Quaternion army, that's what the Lord said to call it, the Quaternion army for four hours. But everyone can take a, a, a watch, either 12 a.m. to 1 a.m. or 1 a.m. to 2 a.m. or 3 a.m. Uh, sorry, or 2 a.m. to 3 a.m. or 4 a.m. I, I think I got it wrong. 12 to 1 a.m. 1 a.m. to 2 a.m. is the second watch. The third watch is 2 a.m. to 3 a.m. And the fourth watch is uh, 3 a.m. to 4 a.m. And um, for the past uh, 
uh, uh, two to three weeks, we have been praying uh, 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 on that schedule. And it's awesome. It's awesome that the, the grace of God has come upon us in a very mighty way unusual grace and most people don't just pray for one watch they some pray for two watches some pray three watches and four watches consistently every night and god shows me that out of this prayer out of this prayer will gone is going to come a revival and um, and all the promises of god uh, that he said we shall get justice, we shall get revival, and we shall experience increase. Hallelujah. And um, uh, uh, we see what is happening in the world, and we as believers cannot go out there to protest like the world. We as believers, we fight for justice on our knees. We fight for justice by prayer. Hallelujah. We fight for justice in the spiritual realm because Satan is the unjust guy. And so we have come to that intercession and we are called to the cross. That intersection is the cross. So it's an opportunity for every believer to arise, to arise, to arise. Jesus said, anyone who will follow me must take up his cross and follow me. The reason why Jesus had to come and suffer all of that was because there were a myriad of injustices that had taken place all through the entirety of mankind's existence from Adam all the way to Jesus. People had hurt one another. People had done all kinds of things against one another and against God. And so God caused that the, those injustices to manifest in the experiences of Jesus. In the experiences of Jesus. That's why the blood of goats and bulls could not take away sins. Because the animal did not really uh, have the capacity to bear the fullness of injustices. But Jesus came as the son of man. That's how the scripture describes him, the son of man. He describes himself as the son of man, the second Adam. And he, he, he received in himself the consequences of our injustices and decided to offer up himself as a sacrifice for us, as a sacrifice for us. And by that sacrifice, he has become the author of eternal salvation for everyone who comes to him. He has become the author of eternal salvation for everyone who comes to him. The scripture says, if we sin in 1 John chapter 2, we have an advocate, the Lord Jesus Christ. We have an advocate. We have an attorney in God's presence. He doesn't just speak on our behalf. His blood speaks on our behalf. And so because of the principle of equalization, Equalization also means that a sacrifice equal or equivalent must be offered to tilt the balance of injustice, okay? Equalization also means a sacrifice equal or equivalent must be offered to tilt the balance of injustice. That means that for Every one of us and our individual bloodlines and the things that have been done in justice. Some of us, our ancestors were murderers. Some of us, our ancestors were thieves. Our ancestors did evil against others. And their blood cries out against us. Now, by the principle of equalization, first of all, Jesus Christ uh, took upon himself 
all the sins of mankind. And so he bore that brunt. He gave his life on the cross. Does that erase the function of Satan as a prosecutor? No, it doesn't stop because injustice continues. And so by the principle of equalization, it means that people will steal. And if you bear witness with me as a believer, you've prayed, you've fasted over many issues which are still pending, which are still pending. Uh, uh, some people are believers uh, uh, sometimes get confused about why, why they're suffering what they're suffering. Even though they've accepted Christ, even though they're praying, even though they're giving tithes, even though they're doing whatever uh, is generally prescribed. But this is the ministry of our Lord Jesus Christ to us. When he says that anyone who will follow him should take up his cross should take up his cross. That means to come to that intercession, to come to the moed, to come to the appointed place and time without fail, where Satan brings up that dirty laundry list of accusations, of evil manifestations against us. When we get to that moed, there, Jesus Christ himself lays out our cross, our sacrifice, what we have to do to make up for the injustice, to make up for the injustice. So if your ancestor was a murderer, was a thief, was a wicked person, and I've done so much that the, the victims have their bloodlines crying against you, Jesus Christ reveals to you what price you must pay. Definitely not, not the same um, 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 degree because he has paid the price, but you have to connect to his cross. You, uh, in those days when they would bring an animal sacrifice, the owner will lay hands on the animal to own it. You have to own up with Jesus. You have to connect with the cross of Jesus by your cross. And your cross is not just any suffering. It's not just anything you decide, but by revelation. By revelation, Jesus gives us a calling. He calls us. He calls us to the cross, which is his cross. He calls us. And this time, at this point, I want to announce to you that the cross to which we have been called is the cross of intercession. The cross of intercession. That is what we've been called to, to stand in the gap for the body of Christ. So as we stand in the gap and confront Satan for the souls of the lost, confront Satan for his own injustice by self-denial, by waking up in the midnight to pray, by taking up a watch as we are led by the spirit, as we are convicted, as you take up to pray, to sacrifice your sleep, to sacrifice your comfort. As you pray, you're paying the price. And so the scripture tells us in Isaiah chapter 53, verse 12, he says, therefore, I will divide him a portion with the great and he will, shall divide the spoil with the strong. Oh, hallelujah. Therefore, I will divide him, that is Jesus, a portion with the great, and he will divide the spoil with the strong. That's The strong is the believer who pays the price because he poured out his soul unto death and he was numbered with the transgressors and he bore the sin of many and made intercession for the transgressors. He made intercession for the transgressors. So God is calling you and me to intercession. 
midnight intercession to pray for the transgressors, for the body of Christ. So regardless of what your ancestors have done, regardless of what injustices have been meted out by your bloodline, regardless of the tallest Satan brings up against you every at every feast to accuse you through the cross of Jesus and by your connection, by your sacrifice, by your self-denial, by standing in the gap, I want you to know that the blood of Jesus will begin to remove every injustice in your bloodline. Hallelujah. Just as the world is calling for justice and uh, those who, who robbed them of their uh, um, of finances are making reparations and, and wealth transfer is taking place in the world in the same way wealth transfer is taking place in the spiritual realm for those who will call for spiritual justice those who will call for spiritual justice, those who will recognize that they are at an intercession, at a cross, and will call, will call, will call on the blood for justice. Hallelujah. And there's going to be wealth transfer. There's going to be wealth transfer for God's people. There's going to be justice for God's people. There's going to be revival. There's going to be increase. Hallelujah. When Israel came from Egypt, the Bible says that God empowered them. There was no one feeble amongst them. They came with silver and gold. And that's what's going to happen in the body of Christ as we wake up from 12 midnight to 4 a.m. and pray and pray without season. That is the sacrifice. And um, the Lord spoke to me more details about what he wants us to do. He, you see, every one of us as believers represent a jurisdiction, a territory that God has assigned to us. And in that jurisdiction, God has called us to reign, to have dominion. In, in Psalm 110, which is our theme for 2020, the Lord said to my Lord, sit at my right hand until I make thine enemies thy footstool. For the Lord shall send the rod of your strength out of Zion, rule in the midst of your enemies. Rule in the midst of your enemies. Hallelujah. And for a long time, Satan and the kingdom of darkness, principalities and powers, they have ruled over our space and over our territory. But now is our time of dominion. Now is our time of power. This is the time the Bible says the Lord at thy right hand shall strike through kings in the day of his wrath. He shall, he shall judge the heathen. He shall wound the heads over many countries. Uh, and, and he shall drink of the brook of the way. Therefore shall he lift up the head. It is time for our dominion. Now, Jesus Christ defeated the kingdom of darkness at the cross. Now, Jesus taught something very profound in Luke chapter 11, verse 21 to 22. Luke 11, 21 to 22. He says, when a strong man fully armed guards his own palace, his goods are in peace. But when a stronger than he comes upon him and overcomes him, he takes from him all his armor in which he trusted and divides his spoils. Oh, hallelujah. Praise God forevermore. When a strong man, fully armed, guards his own palace, his goods are in peace. Now, that's a reference to Satan and the kingdom of darkness. They have held the souls in our communities captive. They have held the wealth in our communities. They've held the wealth in their hands, the riches. They own the businesses, they own the corporations, they own, they own the banks, they, they own the resources. And the scripture says, when a strong man fully armed keeps his own palace, his goods are in peace. So they've had it in peace. But, verse 22 says, but when a stronger than he comes upon him, when a stronger than he comes upon him and overcomes him. Now, that's what Jesus did at the cross. 
he takes from him all his armor in which he trusted. In other words, Jesus dismantled the kingdom of darkness and divides his spoils. Divides his spoils. The scripture says in Isaiah 45, verse 3, and I will give you the treasures of darkness, hidden riches stored in secret places. In Isaiah 53, verse 12, that we just read, he says, therefore I will divide him a portion with the great and he shall divide the spoils with the strong. So you see here that Jesus defeats the kingdom of darkness and then he divides the spoils with intercessors, intercessors. Hallelujah. Those who stand in the gap for the body of Christ. And so there is a call to the cross, a call for intercessors to stand in the gap. And Jesus says that he will overcome Satan on our behalf. You see, I like what the scripture said in Romans chapter 16, verse 19 to 20. The apostle Paul says, um, Romans chapter 16, verse 19 to 20, for your obedience has become known to all. Therefore, I am glad on your behalf, but I want you to be wise in what is good and simple concerning evil. Verse 20, and the God of peace will crush Satan under your foot shortly. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Amen. Now, the God of peace shall crush, shall soon crush. Now the word soon or shortly in that scripture speaks of time, the essence of time, that at a certain point, the victory of the cross will become evident for you who have been called. And all of us have been called to certain specific times and seasons. Hallelujah. And for some of you who have been trusting God and have not yet seen manifestation, this is your season. This is your time. That's why in Psalm 110, he says, the Lord said to my Lord, sit at my right hand until, until I make thine enemies thy footstool. So that word until ref refers to time at an appointed time, at a moed, at a feast at a confluence, at a point, at the cross, at an intersection where Satan shows up because God has shown up. Oh, hallelujah. Because God has shown up. He's shown up with a dirty list of laundry, of ancestral injustices against me and you. And this time, the Lord Jesus Christ uh, has given us uh, what price to pay. Hallelujah. And it is the price of intercession. So God is calling you and me to intercession, to stand in the gap, to deny self. Hallelujah. Take away at least one hour from your sleep every day. I mean every day. I have been doing it for years. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Several years ago, the Lord started with me uh, from, 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 from 1.30 to, uh, to 3.30, two hours. Every night I had to wake up and pray for years. And then uh, the Lord expanded it to four hours. Hallelujah. From 12 a.m. to 4 a.m. Yeah. I've been doing this for years and years. But the reason is because of my calling. I have paid for grace to come upon you. If you are listening to me, there is grace upon you. For the last two weeks, uh, uh, I announced this to a, a, a few people and they have been consistent, consistent because grace is upon them. I am surprised at, 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 at the faithfulness with which people have been praying on this line, 718-218-5930. Again, that number is 718-218-5930. Today, my, uh, 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 this line is just to, to reach out to you uh, uh, to, to, to answer the call to the cross. To answer the call to the cross. To the cross. 
Satan is pinned down at this time. He is pinned down. The God of peace, hallelujah, the God of peace ha has Satan pinned down on behalf of you and me. And we must put our feet on him. Hallelujah. Put our feet on him. Luke chapter 10, verse 17 to 19. Luke chapter 10, verse 17 to 19. The scripture tells us that Jesus sent his disciples, 70 of them, to go and preach in, in towns ahead of him. Hallelujah. Wherever God wanted, Jesus wanted to go and manifest a revival, he sent these 70. Hallelujah. To prepare the ground. Now, Verse 17, Luke chapter 10. Then the 70 returned with joy, saying, Lord, even the demons are subject to us in your name. And he said to them, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. Oh, I love that. And he said to them, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. Verse 19, behold, I give you the authority to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Nothing shall by any means hurt you. Satan is pinned and now we must put our foot, our feet upon his neck. Hallelujah. And the Lord said to me uh, clearly, he says, don't take your feet from off the neck of Satan. Hallelujah. Because he will try ways to get out from that pressure. I wanted to know that the, the promise in the Garden of Eden, that, 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 that we shall crush the head of Satan, that promise has become a reality on the cross. And it's a reality for you. If you are hearing the sound of my voice, God is calling you to become an intercessor for the body of Christ, an intercessor for the jurisdiction where he has put you in charge. Hallelujah. He says, I give you authority to trample. The word trample is from the Greek word pateo. That means to put pressure to put pressure, pateo, pateo, uh, Satan, principalities, powers, uh, uh, authorities, dominions, thrones, uh, every rank of the kingdom of darkness. This is the day of our power. This is the day of our dominion. It is time to pateo the enemy, put pressure, and don't take your foot off. Don't get lazy. Don't get lazy. Keep your foot on that, the, put your foot on top of the neck of the devil and he's going to spit out your souls, your family that is lost uh, to the devil. He's going to spit out, he's going to spew out uh, every, every, every soul that is lost, every friend, every family member that is lost. Oh Jesus, there's going to be salvation of souls. There's going to be a revival. Uh, people in our communities who have become victims of apostasy, and idolatry and, and, and discrimination and injustice are going to be freed. Hallelujah. And God is going to restore the treasures of darkness, hidden riches of secret places. We're going to have the best jobs, the best businesses. We're going to have wealth transfer. We're going to have silver and gold. It's going to gravitate towards us because we're going to put pressure on the enemy. Every day, pick your 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 watch. Hallelujah. So go to the website of the Network of Churches, www.networkofchurches.org and uh, fill in your, the contact form on that website, uh, www.networkofchurches.org. Fill in the contact form and pick your, your, your watch, whether 12 a.m. to 1 a.m. or 1 a.m. to 2 a.m. or 2 a.m. to 3 a.m. or 3 a.m. to 4 a.m. Four watches. Pick your watch and be faithful to it. And I want you to know that God will restore to you the years the locusts have eaten, the canker worm, the caterpillar, and the palmer worm. The Lord is restoring. There is wealth transfer taking place. And this is how, this is how you pay the price. So answer that call. Go to that website right after you have, you have left the, uh, uh, I end the call right now. Go and sign up and start prayer from tonight. Don't procrastinate. You are 
at the cross. You are called to the cross. Hallelujah. So again, the website is www.networkofchurches.org. Hallelujah. www.networkofchurches.org. And um, sign up at the contact form and, 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 and establish the the watch, the first watch is from 12 midnight to 1 a.m. The second watch is from 1 a.m. to 2 a.m. The third watch is from 2 a.m. to 3 a.m. And the fourth watch is from 3 a.m. to 4 a.m. And uh, I want to encourage you, any Christian you know, your Christian brothers, Christian sisters, enlist them, let them come on. You can share this video with them. And uh, God is calling intercessors. And I want you to be a part of the Quaternion army and uh, to stand in the gap for the salvation of souls, uh, for, for wealth transfer for the body of Christ. We have suffered unjustly too long. You see, the world will protest with cards, but we protest by prayer by confronting the, the, the enemy of our peace and prosperity. We thank God for the victory of the cross. And it's time, it's time for justice. It's time for revival. And it's time for increase for God's people. God said it last year, all the signs are manifest and it's time for us to answer the call. God richly bless you for coming on the line. I am Pastor Ken Wally, and on behalf of the leaders of the Network of Churches, God bless you for coming on the line. See you tonight, 718-218-5930. 718-218-5930. God richly bless you for answering the call. God's favor be upon you. Keep praying because prayer is the key to answered prayer. I'll see you on this same stream, same time next week. God richly bless you. Bye.